Okay, uh, students, uh, today we have to cover some aspects in chapters, chapter 9 under the title Semantics. Before we to start talking about the content of the book, I mean the sections and subsections that explain and clarify what's the meaning of semantics, it's okay to start with this very short and rapid introduction and the definition and the meaning of, of semantics. Well, in general, semantics is the study of the relationship between words and how we as users of language draw or derive meaning from those words. People can absolutely interpret words differently because uh, each one of us, each individual has got his or her own exper experience in dealing with the language. So we are not equal in having the same vocabulary or the same interpretation to the words or vocabularies that we have. So I mean there is a variety between one person, one individual, to another. Um, and, and, and semantics, or semantics as a term, involves the deconstruction of words, signals, as well as the sentence structure. It means that when we deal with semantic, we deal with uh, one word by itself and its relation to the adjacent or to the neighboring words, not by itself alone. Uh, the benefit that we can get from the study of semantics is that it influences our reading comprehension as well as our comprehension of other people's words in everyday conversation. Without which, our interpretation or our understanding from the messages that we get from people might not be correct. So uh, it is uh, also uh, a part of studying language and it is in the way of understanding the many meanings of one individual word. And we will see also in further details uh, within, when we deal with the, with the book that we are going to be acquainted or familiar with one word that has got different meanings. And uh, similarly, we have many meanings to refer to one word. So uh, in the beginning, as you see here in front of you, we have some important lines that I uh, put them in yellow, as you see. The definition of semantics, as given in the book, is the study of the meaning of words, phrases, and sentences. So it is not only the study of meaning, I mean the meaning of one word or a group of words, but, I mean isolately, individually, but also phrases when we have combination of words and a bigger form, which is the sentences. In semantic analysis, there is always, this is very important, this is to the heart of the study of semantics, al-middalaliyya. Uh, always an attempt to focus on what words conventionally mean, rather than on what an individual speaker might think they mean or want them to mean on a particular occasion. This means that words, that we interpret, we explain, we try to know the meaning of the individual word that that we deal with these literally we deal with these objectively it's very important also to differentiate between what is meant by objectivity and subjectivity when dealing with with objectivity which means al in arabic there is no involvement or no interference of feelings so i deal with the thing as they are i with things as they are but when we are involving subjectivity, we now try to what? To involve our own uh, uh, feelings towards what is the, or what are, uh, the, the, what is the sentence uh, uh, meaning in general. If we give an example, or if I give you an example, like uh, Ali is not in the class. Ali is not in the class. Mean, meaning that Ali, is not existing now in this class. This is the the uh, what uh, what semantics is concerned with. It is in general concerned with the literal or with the objective meaning of these words given in that sentence. But the same thing here, or we have different ex uh, explanations or interpretations that we can get from Ali is not in the class now. This means what? There is another field which we will deal with, inshallah, in chapter 10, under the title of Pragmatics, 
uh, when we have some particular explanations uh, it, it, more than the meaning given inside or in the words. Now, Ali is not in the class. It means literally, or means literally, this person is not existing in the class. This is from a semantic point of view. From a pragmatic point of view, which is not our class for today, but this is just to introduce you to uh, the coming chapter, inshallah. It means here what? Ali is a student of this, is a student who studies in this class. Ali belongs to this group. So this is not given in the sentence. We cannot see uh, the, the meaning clearly here in the sentence, but we can and infer and and we can deduct or induct we can derive and نشتق المعنى من خلال الكلمات هذا ليس اهتمامنا في اليوم لكنه من باب المقارنة كما موضح في هذه الأسطور المؤشرة في اللون الأصفر. Also we have another interpretation to Ali is not in the class. That means uh, uh, you can uh, speak freely because there is nobody except me and you in the class or in this room. So uh, do not hesitate. You can say, you can tell me what you want because Ali now is not here, right? So this is a, a kind of interpretation that we can get from the words, even though these meanings are not given in the sentence. This approach is concerned with objective or general meaning and avoids trying. The meaning what? The general meaning. This means the lexical meaning. al ma'na al ma'jami. And avoids trying to account for subjective or local meaning. Doing semantics, <clears throat> this is now the concluding sentence, <clears throat> is attempting to spell out what is what it is we all know. Uh, also, when we deal with semantics, we deal with the knowledge that we all share. يعني, منقول, uh, for example, uh, mobile, we know mobile and the meaning of mobile. So we all know the meaning of this word. That's why sometimes I, for me, I need to translate some of the words because I am afraid that some of these words are not clear to the students. So I use the Arabic to clarify some of the terms that I feel they may, might not share me the meaning of that word. So if I say now semantics, many of you, many of you do not know the meaning of semantics. That's why I need to what? Oh, how will were not successful <clears throat> in finding what exactly semantics mean uh, in, uh, in our own uh, uh, as a linguistic term. So to, to semantics, يعني, يعرفها, that's okay, great. But for those who don't know the meaning of semantics, it's علم الدلالة. علم الدلالة. ليش أقولها بالعربي؟ Because I expect some of you, even if we have just one, two, three, four students, who might not understand or could not find the meaning in this of this word in dictionaries, we would explain. ليش أفسرها؟ حتى يصير عندنا إيش؟ حتى we can share the same knowledge when we deal with the word in the coming sections. Now it is again to share knowledge of the meaning of a word, maybe a phrase or even a sentence in a language or in a given language. All these attempts are after one important thing, which is meaning, al-ma'na. Now with meaning, I will let the floor for you to tell me what is meaning and how many types of meanings are explained or uh, detailed in the book. If you are interested in giving me your answer, please let me see your hands raised. I may start now with Anwar Abdul Wahab Yes, sir. Uh, we start uh, defining semantics uh, is the study meanings in language. Uh, in meaning, there are uh, two types of meanings, uh, conceptual meanings and uh, associative meaning. Okay. Conceptual no, meaning. Just give me the, me, uh, the uh, what do you understand from the conceptual, and I may lay, lay, yes. let the second part for somebody else. Yes. Uh, the conceptual meaning, the basic components of meanings conferred by the literal use of words. Okay. 
Okay, so it is the literal or, or let's say the uh, lexical, uh, the meaning, lexical that meaning we find in dictionaries. Yes. This is exactly the conceptual. Thank you very much. Okay, now let me go to Dunya Sabah, please. Dunya Sabah. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Semanistic is the study of the meaning in language. We can different different it between conscious conceptual, conceptual. Uh, meaning conceptual. and conceptual meaning and associative meaning. Associative. By conceptual uh, meaning, we uh, mean the basque uh, com combine combinations of meaning that are conveyed from the little use of the word. It is the type of meaning. For example, uh, the word needle uh, consists uh, conceptual meaning. Conceptually. Con conceptually meaning is a uh, than uh, and sharp tool. As for the associative meaning of the word, the associative uh, it with pain uh, or deci or decisive, and this uh, associative uh, differ, uh, differ from person to person uh, and are part of uh, conventional meaning of the word. Okay, that's th that's great. Thank you very much, Nia. Again, it is conceptual, conceptual. and one, conceptual, and the second one is associated. Associated. Thank you. Okay, thank you. thank you. Now, the example given in the book is about needle, al obra. Okay, so now from a conceptual point of view, tell me how to see the first is the physical description of the word. It is very <coughs> light in weight, thin. And it was not a fifth. Sharp, cut to the steel instrument, it's made of steel. So, this is what we can see. When good conceptual meaning, it means the meaning or the reflection or the response that we can deliver when we see or when we touch or when we hear about something. When you tell me what's the meaning of laptop, I may describe the things that I can see in the laptop. أقول لك إنه هذا شيء هو قابل للفتح والغلق بسهولة ولتكون الشاشة بأحجام صغيرة ويتحمل ماركة فلان وإلى آخره. So this is the conceptual meaning. When I say pen, I can say that this or pencil that this, this thing which is uh, maybe green, maybe black. يعني I can see the color of pencil. It contains graphite. نوع من الجرافيت. It's made of wood. It's نوع من الخشب. So these things, the conceptual meaning, it means the thing that I can physically see or that I can physically uh, uh, respond to the thing that I may uh, feel about. While the second one, concerning again the, uh, the example given in the book, which is needle, نجي إلى المعنى الأسوسيتب أو المعنى المرافق well, we mumkin istambata min tilka kelima. When we say needle, al obra, we directly may go where? To pain, to illness, blood, maybe hospital, a health center, a drug, or whatever. Also, this word can be put in proverbs, like um, something hard to find. Where is this thing? Oh, it's hard to find. Min al sa'uba an tajidahu. Oh, I can say it's just like a needle in a haystack, or haystack, sorry. كأنها أبرة في كومة من القش. So all these are types of meanings. Again, we have two. We have the conceptual meaning, means the physical, the real one, and the associative, which is the derived. المعنى المشتق أو المعنى الذي قد يترابط أو يتزامن مع المصطلح. Now we have we are given some examples here, and this is the first attempt to to know what's the meaning of semantics. The hamburger ate the boy. Now, what's wrong with this sentence, please? What's wrong with this sentence? The hamburger. Can I answer, please? Uh, it's okay, but unfortunately, I started the class. I may come to you later, Mahmoud. But please raise your hand when you have an answer. Mahmoud, you will be the next speaker after a class. And okay, then we may go to Abdurrahman. Yes, please. 
Yes, that's, this sentence is uh, uh, not uh, acceptable because uh, 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 it's grammatically uh, or, uh, correct uh, because uh, it uh, takes this form and uh, phrases uh, plus verb plus uh, uh, and phrases. But uh, uh, semantically uh, is out. Oh. Because uh, the out the, the doer of the verb eight is uh, not capable to do Please. this. Oh. do this action. So there is no possibility for a, a hamburger to eat a boy. Yeah. However, grammatically, grammatically it's okay. We have the subject, we have the verb, and we have also the object. So there is no trouble up to here. But when we deal with, sem with semantics, from a semantic point of view, يعني من ناحية من الناحية الدلالية هذه الجملة تعتبر جملة خاطئة غير مقبولة. السبب إيش? Now, this is my question. But before I, uh, I, I will give you a minute maybe to think of the reason why this sentence is acceptable. I may ask Mahmoud, to tell me what do you understand from the hamburger ate the boy? Can I answer, sir? Yalla, Mahmoud, come on. Okay, sir. So, uh, so, uh, just like we say, for example, the hamburger ate uh, the boy. Uh, so, this uh, sentence is uh, syntactically uh, is good, uh, but uh, semantically is old. Uh, so, uh, since uh, the sentence, uh, the boy ate the hamburger is uh, perfectly uh, uh, acceptable, uh, we may be able to identify the source of the problem and this, uh, the kind of noun uh, that can be the subject of the verb uh, ate, uh, must, uh, and it is must uh, denote an entity that is uh, capable of eating. Good, good. This, uh, now so, you answer you answer my question. Yes. Thank okay. you very much. Can now, I complete just a little? Yalla, follow. Okay. I'm sorry. And uh, the uh, the noun uh, hamburger does not have uh, this uh, property, and the noun boy does. Uh, such an element may be uh, as uh, general as uh, animate being. We can then use this idea to describe part of the meaning of words as uh, either having a plus or not having, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, minus that uh, particular feature. It's too early to talk about these semantic <laughs> features. But this okay, is okay. perfect answer to my question, uh, which Thank says, why, is it, why isn't it possible, uh, why is it odd to say the hamburger ate the, the boy? Now, uh, uh, Mahmoud uh, thankfully gave us the answer that the property of this noun, it is a noun, hamburger. But the property of this noun has not the ability to what to do an action like eating. While if we replace these, if we put the boy in the beginning and we say the boy ate the hamburger, it is both semantically and syntactically okay. Why? From a semant from a syntactic safiya, the order of the sentence is perfect. We have the subject verb and we have the complement. All these are okay. And semantically, it's okay also because the man has the property of eating or having uh, a hamburger for maybe breakfast or dinner or whatever. So now this is why we need to study semantics. If you are later asked what is the benefit or what is the advantages of studying semantics, you can answer or you start your answer. This is not a complete answer. You start your answer is that part of the meaning can be identified through or by the use of semantics. Um, so, excuse me, can I uh, give you uh, or tell me about the importance of uh, studying the semantics? Okay, so uh, the importance is uh, just like a uh, source. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the important is uh, just like we say, uh, clear understanding the meaning uh, allows uh, uh, students and teachers to communicate their messages uh, clearly. 
so uh, for example uh, i see يعني البحر my father every day هذه يستاد نقول عنها شلون خطا uh, yes. اذا قلنا i see انظر my father every day it's okay Yes. Number one. This Number two. Not, maybe point of view because C as a noun cannot yes. be a, a, a verb. Cannot, cannot come after another noun or another subject. Yes. And second, yes. Uh, semantic to provide speakers uh, with a structure to use uh, when they need to put words into sentences. Uh, just like uh, creating meaning. Uh, for example, a sandwich has eaten a boy. Structurally is okay, but uh, meaning is not. Yes. A boy has eaten a, a sandwich. This is actually, thank you very much. Okay, so you yes. shortened and you paved the way for uh, the coming sections, maybe. So here we have to know more about the uh, the properties yes. of the noun. Yeah, it is not a matter of choosing any noun that we want and put it in a sentence. We yes, need yes. to specific وهذا هو هنا ياتي دور السيمانتكس او الدلاله اللي ليعطينا فكره عن كيفيه اختيار هذا الفاعل او هذا الاسم مع ذلك الفعل. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. اوكي اوكي اوكي. ناو ذيس سنتنس از محمود سيد سنتاكتيكلي اند اي جيس يس محمود سنتاكتيكلي اتس اوكي بس سيمانتيكلي اتس اوت فور ذا ريزنز ذات وي جاست توكت اباوت ا سكند اجو. Now let's move to know more about the semantic features. Now, how to decide? We need the, the noun to be rich of the properties that enable that noun to do a particular action. So now here we have a table. This is just a sample of what of multiple tables. We can create more and more tables. But here, become these components. You see this column. Have here al-mufradat, which is very common. Uh, uh, very common. Sorry, uh, uh, among other tables. So before we say that this word is in this or in that, or uh, it is, uh, uh, for example, uh, of something, we need to what uh, to define. These with what? With two, with two signals, either with the plus or with a minus, with a plus or with a minus. Now, table, is it animate? No, that's why we give it a minus. Is it a human? Table, no. Is it a female? We don't know. We don't have actual agenda for table. Is it adult? Rashida or Valera or Valera or Rashid? even because this is not animate, so we cannot decide. That's why it is what? It's minus. Now for a horse. Ka'an, hai, animate? Naam, ka'an, hai. Human? No. Female? No. Adult? Yes. Boy? Ka'an, hai? Yes. Human? Yes. We see here, we have two yeses, two pluses. Two signals, so single, sorry, two pluses. Two signs for plus. We have female, no, it's not a female. Adult, no, still this boy is young to be adult. Man, animate, human, but not female, but he is adult. Girl, also, also we have animate, human, and female, but still young. So just like a boy, they are both not adult. For women, which got all the pluses, can high yes, human yes, female yes, and adult yes. So this is how we decide that this now might become proper to be used to fill a gap. To be associated with with the verb that comes after which. Now um this simple example is an illustration of the procedure of a procedure for analyzing meaning. How do you feed bimada? Now, if you are next time asked, why is the table? What is the benefit of this table? It is for analyzing meaning in terms of semantic features. Remember, in terms of semantic features. 
uh, from a feature from a feature analysis like this we can say that at least part of the meaning part of the meaning of the word girl in english involves the element kaba we can also characterize the features all these are uh, explained uh, previously now this is now we have an example uh, it is a sentence and we need to fill the gap here is uh, in the sentence with with what we we need to follow it with our with a noun and this noun should be human should be human so we can say the man the boy the girl the woman is reading newspaper but the horse is reading the newspaper this is odd why the original horse is is wrong what's wrong because it is not human so there is no possibility for a horse to read a newspaper or to read even uh, next one next section words ask containers oh, this is not the end of the quote not the end of the story not all nouns can fill this gap because we have some types of nouns that can be used by a human to human however they are not uh, possible to be used to for cigars like this one Misal, advice nasiha threat tahdeed warning tahdeer or tanbeer so now advice of course there is no possibility for a human to advise uh, a bee ما ممكن انه واحد ينصح نحله اقول لها روح على ذيك الزهره او لا ترحين and there is no possibility to threat something which is not enemy so you cannot threat a table ما ممكن انه تهدد الطاوله you see all these are odd uses of of words um having emphasis advice threat and warning can be used from a human to a human but cannot be addressed to non-element objects that's why they are called containers of meaning they carry the meaning components can i answer so about this uh, object you want to say something yes about Your words head. as uh, containers yeah uh, words as containers uh, there is a view uh, that says that uh, words can be looked from a different angel or can be a word be uh, a container of uh, a number of uh, meanings yes uh, so yes uh, so it is uh, a container of meaning and uh, helped us uh, and analyzing uh, the basic components of meanings of a word in general now uh, hmm. we can say uh, is it uh, prob uh, problematic uh, or does it have some advantage or disadvantage etc first it is a uh, uh, problematic because uh, some words that uh, cannot found the component uh, meanings of the, uh, those words uh, example uh, advice uh, it is uh, totally honest from human to human and sometimes make uh, uh, a suggestion yes sure what yes. should for example yes sir. when we use the model verb should yeah uh, you should do something as advice Yes. Yes. Or uh, uh, sometimes uh, as uh, suggestions. Good. Thank so, Mahmoud Adil, you are the student of the day. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we all study the this uh, chapter. Yeah. Okay. We so, together. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's great actually to uh, hear from you and your colleagues answers that are not found maybe in the book, but this is for from your own. Uh, labor that you did something extra and this is very great thank you very much thank you sir. now we have three important roles we need to identify one by each and instead of thinking of words as containers of meaning we can look at the roles they fulfill within the situation described by a sentence if the situation is in a, in a simple sorry is a simple event as the boy kicked the ball now what do we have here the boy kicked the ball grammatically or syntactically it's okay there is no trouble at all 
Semantically, it is also okay because the boy has the ability to do something to kick the ball, for example. Now, before we move on to know all these roles, I mean, the three parts of roles, it is important to remind you, I don't know whether you have an idea of this or not, that with verbs, we have two types of verbs. We have the dynamic verb, verbs and we have the, uh, the state of verbs. Dynamic, which involve action and activity. There is a movement. With the state of verbs, we don't have any activity. We don't like the three in a shot. For example, the one given here, the boy did something, which is what kicking the ball, right? But if I say uh, the apple is green, so here the verb is is a state of why because there is no action. It is just concerned with giving us an idea of the color of that apple, which is green. So there is no activity. What's your name? My name is Hussein. So here I'm giving you my name, my proper name. But there is no activity at all. But if I say Hussein is teaching, is doing an activity. That's why we have a dynamic which involves activity, and we have stative which involves no activity or zero activity. So this is example of uh, some examples or some sorry explanations which are I feel really important before we go to talk about uh, agent and theme as one or the first role given in the book. Let me listen to uh, some of you who have who have. Can ideas. I answer, sir? No, let, let's move to Amal, please. Amal. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so the, the first rule is the uh, agent and the uh, theme. Uh, agent. Amal, uh, 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 no. Now, no, in sir. grammar, in grammar, when we when you studied grammar for the last two years, what what yes. how do you interpret agent and theme? What do you call agent and theme? From the language, from the language. Subject yes. and object. Excellent. We have the subject and the object. So the yes. subject represents the agent, while the uh, theme is represented by the object. That's okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Um, the agent uh, represents uh, the uh, the doer of the action, uh, while while the theme is uh, is the recipient of that action or yes. the uh, the entity that affected by that action. Yes. This is great. When, yes, when we say uh, that uh, the boy kicked the ball, uh, the agent uh, here is the boy who is uh, who is doing uh, the act of uh, kicking. Uh, yeah. But the ball is the uh, the the uh, entity or that uh, the things that uh, which is uh, affected by uh, that kicked of that by the boy. Of the boy. This is okay. Great. Yes. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. This is okay. Now, any more ideas, please? Anybody wants to add something? Yes, uh, Marwa Mahmoud, I guess. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Then, again, can theme. Uh, it's the term of the identity performing uh, the action technically nouns as the agent and uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe an uh, originism or otherwise and the identity uh, involved in or affected by the action for example um, the girl broke the plate um, in this example the girl um, is entity that performed uh, the produce and uh, the plate is the entity affected uh, in the producers by the, by, the, by, the, by the performer or by the doer of the action thank you very much yes. great yes i see i see nasser can i answer sir? yes sir. no mahmoud you keep silent <laughs> 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 okay, thank you, sir. Asil, did you raise your hand? Well. No, sir. Jamil. Okay. So now, um, I, I guess you gave us everything related here. So um, um, now, what we have in this example is that the boy, the, the boy, sorry, the, as the entity that performs the action, this person 
is the one who performs or who does something. Techn technically run as agent. Another role is taken by the board, the entity uh, that is involved in or affected by the action, had an imaginary object, which is called theme. Sometimes it's called patient. The theme can also be an entity. Now, okay, so uh, if we go back to the same example, the boy kicked the, the, the ball. This theme, the ball is this theme, can also be what in the place of the agent, but the performance is different. As I said, we have two types of verbs, the dynamic one and the stated. So that is here is simply being described, not performing an action. The ball was red, like the apple is green, or was, yeah, was green. So here we, in this sentence, it's meaningful, of course, but there is no action in the, in the sentence. Yes, because we are just describing the color of the ball. So the ball originally is what is the theme, which now takes the place of the agent, the Abidur al-Fa'al, our agent. <coughs> Many examples are given here. All these talk about the same thing. One important thing to add is that the agent is not conditionally a human. So non-human also can be agents. For example, the dog chased the boy. Al-Kalb rakaba wara al-walad. Or the dog is chasing the cat or chased the cat. So here we have what? Two non-animate uh, 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 phrases or, uh, sorry, two non-animate nouns that can be involved in one sentence. So there is the possibility to use non-human entity, non-human entity to be here as the agent. And we have also maybe two parts, two noun phrases that can be non-human as well. As the example, the boy or the dog chased the cat. The boy, al-kalb, rakaba, aw, tarada, al Noun phrases are not human. So this is all about the first role. What about the second role? We have instrument and experiencer. Let me listen to your answers. I may now go to Zina Jabbar, please. Yes, yes. Instrument, the entity by which the action of the verb is uh, carried out uh, goal. The direction toward which the action of the verb moves. But the experiences, the entity that the, and, uh, undergoes the an uh, emotion state by, uh, of uh, being or on, uh, on, uh, a perspection of the experience by the verb. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Do we have another explanation? Yes, yes. I mean, Ahmed. Yes, sir. Uh, instrument when when the agent use other entity to do to do the same action like the agent do for example the boy cut the rope with an old razor and he draw the picture with a crime here uh, here are the noun phrases an old razor and uh, a, a crime use it in the semantic uh, semantic rule of instrument we mean that on all the razor, it, it, uh, it's uh, did the same action like the agent do. We can consider it as the second subject like the agents. Right, exactly. It can be considered considered as, but not it is the second, but it can be considered like uh, the second subject or second agent. Thank you very much, Yasemi. I may add something. Here we have what? Uh, for example, I use this example with the uh, with other classes. Maybe it's it's easy to understand to be understood. So I can see she cut the bread. She cut the bread. Now cut. This is of course in the past. She cut the bread. Now if we analyze this sentence, what do we get? We have she as agent, and we have the what the um, the cut as a verb or the, ac the activity. And we have the bread, which is what? Which is the theme. Now, 
this is very normal and we studied examples uh, like this in the agent and thing but now if i say she cut the bread with a knife now here we need to what uh, to analyze what is the meaning the semantic meaning or the to know the um, the semantic role of with a knife when I want to analyze the rest of the sentence or the, the new additional to the sentence, which is with a knife. Now we have what? We, we have a woman or maybe a girl who cut up the bread into pieces or smaller pieces, but not with her fingers. However, she used a knife. So a knife is the instrument which used to cut the bread. It can also be considered like a second subject or a second agent. يمكن اعتباره فاعل مساعد آخر لغرض أداء فعل معين. Without which, بدون ذلك, the action might not be achieved or completed. So this is the instrument. While the experience are here, uh, when things are related to senses إلى الحاسيس, feelings in المشاعر perception or to state of being الاشياء اللي لها علاقه بحاله الشخص whether that person is happy or sad enjoyed or interested in something all these can also be expressed in the under the term of experiencer هذا لازم يفهم جيدا because you might be later asked a question as follows Analyze the following sentences according to their semantic role. Analyze the following sentences in terms or according to their semantic role. Yes. When we have things not only yes. or الحواس, but when things are related to a state of being, or when things are related to uh, to uh, the perception, uh, like I know, I understand, I perceive, or I comprehend. So all these are related to or oh, okay. uh, Well. Now, uh, <clears throat> these, again, I may restate the question, analyze the following sentences according to their semantic role. So in this case, you need to, uh, to remember how to analyze a sentence according to the role that each word inside that sentence plays. Well, let's move to the next one, or role number three. Here we have the location. Source and goal, if you have any idea, please let me... Okay, let me... can I answer? No, you can't. <laughs> yes, Norm Hassan, please. Yeah, you get five stars to today, Mahmoud. Yes, sir. Thank you. Norm Hassan, please. Norm Hassan, please. Norm Hassan, please. Location, the semantic role of the, of the noun verbs uh, identify uh, where the an entity is. For example, the boy is sitting in the classroom. The classroom no. is the location. And source, and source of the noun phrase of the noun phrase identify where an in identity uh, move from. For example, the boy uh, run from the house. The house is source. And Good. goal uh, of the noun phrase identify where an entity uh, move to, for example, the boy uh, walk it to the window. The window is go. Good, excellent. And you use examples, I think, not from the book. This is okay. Yes. No, right. This is great. Shireen, please, what do you have? Shireen, Mahmoud, what do you want to add, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, source uh, from where uh, the entity moves. A goal where the entity moves to. For example, Ali drove uh, from Jeddah to Mecca. Uh, source Jeddah, go uh, Mecca. 
Good. She has moved the student from classes A to classes B, source class A, a goal class B. That's great. Excellent very much. Well, thank you very much. This is very excellent. Also, very nice examples that are not given in the book. We want to talk about a place for something. For example, I put the book on the board or I left my mobile in my office. So here, uh, uh, I'm just giving, this is a prepositional phrase. Uh, and also it is from a semantic, uh, from a syntactic, uh, grammatically uh, in the room or in my office. This is uh, called uh, adverb of place. So here when we have things that are related to place and there is no movement, Again, we are now describing the role of location. Uh, another example uh, that also uh, uh, you gave, I guess, for example, we may say that uh, uh, Ahmed moved from Basra to uh, Hulla. So Ahmed is the agent, of course, who moved from uh, from Basra, which is the place from which he departed, right? And the destination, Babel or Hulla, so here we have what to talk about the source, which is Basra and the goal to reach, which is Babel or Hulla. Now, you see here, this is the table, and your answer might not might be in this way. So Mary saw a fly on the wall. Mary saw a fly on the wall. Now, Mary is not the agent here, be careful. There she have a more agent. There she has she agent. Mary is not agent here because what? Because here we have a verb of senses. So here we need to be careful to differentiate and to figure out the difference between the word when it comes to being as a subject or an agent as an experiencer or agent itself. So the theme, which is the object, is the fly on the wall. Now, the second one, she borrowed a magazine from George, from whom? From George. In a manual Mazdar Lidalika Kitab, or George. Now she squashed or she squashed the bug with a mag with the magazine. With the magazine is what she used a magazine to hit that bug and squashed it. Sarat and the Adat al An Stuchimatli Garab Garab Dirtilka al Hajara. She handed the magazine back to George. Here we have what? This is the goal again because Or maybe the example that I gave you uh, that somebody moved from Basra to Babel. Basra is the source while the Babel is the, is the destination uh, uh, from which or to which the, uh, the person wants to get. Now we come to uh, to the next or to the last part for today's class, which is the lexical relations. Lexical relations. May I Sometimes, can I answer? Th th just give me a minute, please. Sometimes you write a sentence, and your professor may give you red mark or highlight some areas as awkward and have he. Uh, you maybe because you don't have that full knowledge or experience why is, is the sentence why the sentence is wrong this is maybe one of the reasons of the uh, connotations and collocations between the words now this is one thing another thing is that when we have maybe some nouns and we have different nouns that lexically give similar meaning, but that they are not equal. Sometimes we use adjectives, and these adjectives are replaceable, so I can replace this adjective instead of that, but this is not for granted. This is just a general uh, introduction to the lexical relations, and here we have, I'm going to read some of these, not only can words be treated as constraints of meaning, 
or as for following roles in events, they can also have relationships. This is the exact or the pure, or let's say the heart of semantics. The relationship. relationships. Ah, let's get like a number of. I had a set of the question like on a keyword or on a sentence. We get like this is awkward. And how the sentence is not necessary. They are not necessary. Okay. Why? Because that professor couldn't find a good relationship between the words. So if we are asked the meaning of the word conceal, you have a bit of a mind. We might simply say it is the same as hide. كذلك hide. But uh, are these two uh, 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 verbs replaceable all the time? Let's see. Or give the meaning of shallow, ضحل, as the opposite of deep, عميق. Or the meaning of pine, اللي هو صنوبر, كهوة نوع من أنواع الأشجار. هذا كلها مقدمات. In order to undo, in doing so, we are characterizing the meaning of each word. Not in terms of its component features, but in terms of its relations, or relationship to other words. This approach is used in the semantic description of the Najdan one of language and treated as the analysis of the lexical relationship. Now, if you are next time asked, analyze the following sentences uh, according to their lexical relationships or lexical relations. Lexical معناها قاموسي أو المعجمي. We have some basic things here or components. We may start with synonymy. This is one. And synonyms is a different. There is a difference in pronouncing these words. So we have synonymy and synonyms. Okay. So I may start with whom? Tabarak Hadi, please. Yes, sir. Synonyms. Synonyms is a word that has the same uh, different meanings as another word. Or uh, a synonym, uh, another uh, the definition, synonyms are uh, two or more words with very similar, almost identical meaning. Uh, for example, uh, ability... Are they similar, are they similar to Barak? Are these words similar in shape? Uh, no, no. In shape, no. But in, in, in meaning. It is okay. It is okay, Tabarak, to include this in the definition that we have words with different shapes but similar in meaning. They are different in shape but similar in meaning. So this is very important yeah. to include. It. Please go. Uh, for example, uh, ability skills or create, make, or produce. Um, uh, sometimes there are many occasions with the, when one word uh, is appropriate in a sentence, but its synonyms uh, will be odd. For yes. example, uh, yeah. Sarah, Sarah had only one answer correct in the test, mm. on the test. Uh, so the word replay is the, is the synonyms of uh, answer, but uh, would sound odd. It sounds odd. Yeah, reply. Yes. Good. Okay. So uh, what, what Tabarak used is the examples in the book, answer and reply. When things are related to exams, written exams, the answer is okay, but the reply is not okay. But when things related to phone calls, yeah, I can answer or I can reply the call. Answer the call or reply the call. How the answer is replaceable. But when things are related to doing exams or tests, maybe on campus or somewhere else, this is not replaceable. I mean, a reply cannot replace answer in this sense. Okay. Anyone else? Asil, Nasser? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The synonym means that uh, the word uh, has another meaning, but we cannot always use uh, the synonym of the word, but uh, according to the context mm. uh, of the sentences, and uh, not necessary uh, the similarity in the meaning must be exa uh, exactly the same and the synonym may, uh, may differ from uh, one language to another and the That's British it. language different from American lang uh, English language uh, for example um, my brother had lunch 
But, um, two uh, two example. My brother half lunch. Okay, Asil. Do we have two identical meanings of one word? هل هناك كلمتان متساويتان تماما في المعنى? Two words that that are similar totally. May I answer? Yes. Yes, sir, we have uh, a lot of words are identical. So we can say Jane is a quick. Also, we can say Jane is, fa is fast. Also, we can say Jane is speed speedy. So we have uh, identical uh, meanings. Also, we have sometimes uh, uh, not identical uh, meaning. We can but uh, replace it w with the other. Look, Abdurrahman, I partially agree with you. I partially disagree with you. We have the possibility to sometimes we have the possibility to replace one word by another. But these two words are not identical in meaning. Remember, they are replaceable on some occasions, in some events, but not all the time. Remember this, Abdurrahman. Because this yes, information that, that's what I, what, what I meant that's what I meant, sir. No, no, no. You said Abdurrahman, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I am. That we have identical meanings. Is that what you said or not? Yes, sir. No. But sometimes we don't I, have identical meanings. Uh, in this case, sometimes we have and some other times we don't. Listen, yes, that, that's what we I'm should saying. keep in mind that the idea of sameness used in discussing synonym or synonymy is not necessarily total sameness. So there, uh, that's why I even underline it with green or with blue, sorry. There are many occasions when one word is appropriate in a sentence. Are they okay? But its synonym would be odd on another occasion. For example, whereas the word answer fits the other example, Malat Man, Malat Man, Lee Echad Nao, Stawa Zemitek Asil Alama Al Dakar, Ria Atatna Al Mitar. So we have similarities, but sometimes not always. Okay, Abdurrahman? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what about the next one? Uh, Yes, Ikhlas, uh, Abdul Hamid, please. Yes, Antonans? Yeah. Uh, uh, are words that Antony. have. Uh, this is Antony. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are words that have uh, opposite meaning? Uh, uh, this actually two type of uh, antonym, antonyms. Antonyms. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Gradable, when we have different words that yeah. carry different meanings. Yeah, gradable. Now, two types, gradable and non-gradable. Non-gradable. Give me an example of gradable. A gradable uh, uh, are this uh, which uh, 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 we can say kind of uh, 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 sh short or kind of uh, tall. Right. So we have short uh, and tall. This is what this is. Gradable? Yeah, gradable, because we can imagine uh, 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 something between uh, between them. That's okay. This is part of the answer. Thank you very much, class. Okay. So I'm smaller than you and slower, sadder, colder, shorter, and older. So you see here, what is common among these adjectives is the ER. So when there is an adjective that can be compared with ER or with more, if it is more than two syllables, two syllables, so this is gradable. So we can say what? This person is sad. That person is sadder than this. That person is the saddest one. Are the superlative comparative degrees? Superlative degree or comparison? So gradable because we can add er. Okay. Now what about the word dead or the adjective dead? Can we say this person is deader than that or not? What do you think? No, no, not. No, no, that's not. I'm not saying. That's why it's, it is non-gradable. It cannot be compared with ER. 
لكن في نفس الوقت it is non gradable but it carries what is called the negative test now what is a negative test test, uh, test sorry which can, which is concerned highly with the first one i mean the non non gradable anwar abdul wahab yes the gradable uh, is one of bare uh, of words with opposite meaning where the two meaning uh, put on continuous uh, domini for example uh, cheap uh, opposite expensive uh, answer, yes and now gradable it is also called uh, complementary pairs uh, which uh, words which are uh, direct opposites uh, for Come example uh, uh, the word alive or died uh, we can say uh, adjective or adverb is uh, one that cannot be used in the comparative or superlative Go, this is with the non gradable yes. because the, example uh, death death or alive. Uh, can't, uh, can't say, say uh, alive. we don't uh, we don't uh, we can't uh, say uh, dear or dearest okay yes. now i'm still asking about the negative test uh, to put it very simply when i say uh <laughs> ما اعرف منو المتحدث يعني استاذ انا امل عبد الوهاب يس تفضلي تفضلي امل with the respect to uh, the negative uh, uh, negative uh, uh, subject when we use the neg uh, negation of adjective uh, that's um, um, for example like uh, not uh, smart we cannot say that the opposite of not smart is stupid or okay. the, uh, sorry, or the the meaning of not smart is stupid. That's uh, the that's what's mean by uh, when we uh, when we use uh, negative, negative of ad, of adjectives, we cannot uh, uh, use uh, the the adjectives that uh, that we should that we uh, um, that we uh, can say that it's uh, similar in meaning. When we say not uh, uh, plus an adjectives, we can uh, we can uh, not uh, put uh, uh, an adjective uh, equal to that in meaning with yes. that uh, when we uh, use the negative. Correct, Amal. Okay, so sometimes we don't need to use negative here, but we can refer to the negative indirectly. Um, uh, this laptop is black. That means it isn't white. When I say this wall is pimp, which means it is not green, I can say this picture is small, which means that it isn't large. When we say this person is alive, it is definitely not a dead person. So these are all uh, some, let's say, uh, explanations that can be put under the umbrella of non-gradable antonyms. Um, although we can use the negative test, to identify the non-gradable antonyms, in a language, we usually avoid describing one, num one member of an antonymous, pair as the negative or uh, of the other. Uh, an address, that doesn't mean this person without an address, but can be treated as the opposite of dress. It doesn't mean that this person or that person yeah, is not dress, not dress. It actually means do the reverse, and this brings us very close to Reversives. This reversives as the definition can be found in the glossary at the end of the book. So I think this is enough for today. Next time, ah, before I end the session, here we have what? We have a table. And this table is, uh, the, let's say, the, the framework, the framework uh, division or classification of, of the nouns that we were studying in terms of semantic relationships. We have living thing under which we have a creature. Plants. 
With under creature, we have what animal, bird, insect, maybe. With the plant, mizruat, we have a vegetable, flower, tree, and so on. So up to now, it is. Uh, I think this is enough for the for today. Uh, next time, we are going to cover the rest of the section up to the end, including including what the questions at the end of the chapter. Okay. So uh, before I end the session, I may ask you if you have any comments or uh, questions, things you might not clear to you. Please raise your hand. Let me see your hands so, uh, so that I can answer your inquiry. Any questions? Anything you feel still unclear, please? Now just say yes or no. Is everything clear? Yes, sir. I think it's clear. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, I hope. sir. No. I hope. Okay. Uh, Thanks for your participation. Thanks for your participation. I hope you enjoyed the class for today. Inshallah, we'll meet next uh, week to uh, cover the rest of the sections uh, uh, under the title of semantics.